Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mama's Time Out, where real moms come to talk. I'm you listening, and I hope you enjoy the show today. Again, for new listeners, I'm Patty, owner of LittleBitesNews.com, GiftsPartySuppliesAndMore.com, MamasTimeOut.com, and WAHBusinessDirectory.com, where we offer shopping, child development, parenting resources, and low-cost advertising. You can find party supplies, gift ideas, and more, along with our social network and live support call-in show for moms. And I am a former elementary teacher, turned stay-at-home, work-at-home mom, and mom of two boys. Today, I will be talking to our special guest, Yana Berlin, who is the founder of Fabulously 40, and she will be talking to us about ways to take a mama's time out, um, activities and hobbies for moms to take care of yourself which is something I haven't been doing too good at lately, and I, I've i been so involved in our election process lately and the whole uh, political debate um, that I have been taking a break, so to speak, from my online ventures. And uh, I look forward to talking with Yana today and look forward to getting some ideas from her so that after all the stress of this election time passes, um, I will start thinking about more ways of taking a mama's time out and getting back to the gym again and uh, taking care of me so that I don't feel as stressed as I have been, I guess, the last couple of weeks. We're getting, you know, as you know, we're getting really close to the election day on November 4th, and we'll be electing our new president and you know I've been doing a lot of research on both and have heard very you know lots of lots of different things and the mainstream media doesn't tell you everything so I have taken it upon myself to get more educated about this election and who the candidates are and and I've just found that uh, one particular candidate has too many uh, interest that conflict with my beliefs and values and that of our own constitution. Um, Mr. Obama also plans to enact the Freedom of Choice Act as soon as he is elected president, which will take away parental rights to be notified of a, of a teenage abortion, take away the father's rights, take away the state's rights take away um, the option to educate moms about alternatives to abortion, and he's just too extreme, too extreme for me on that alone. Not to mention he has um, already attempted to, uh, uh, let's see, I guess have his uh, truth squad go after people and the political scene. Oh, no, my phone. Sorry about that. I lost connection. And as we're still waiting for Yana to get on the line, um, we had problems with the uh, time differences last time, so hopefully this time we'll get to talk to her. Um, While we're waiting, I'll go ahead and talk a little bit more about the political issues that are going on right now since election time is coming up pretty quickly and why I and many others, after doing lots of research and not going by just what the mainstream media wants to tell you and share, uh, why uh, Senator Obama is a scary choice for our country. Like I, like I was mentioning, he wants to um, 
enact the Freedom of Choice Act as soon as he gets into the presidential position, which will prevent uh, allowing options to, uh, you know, women alternatives to abortion, which will take away father's rights, it will take away parental rights to be notified, it will take away many state rights that are already in place. So it's just not good news and it's a total step backwards on our individual rights as people and, uh, you know, not to, not to mention that uh, there's just so many more alternatives out there now and if you don't educate people about it, they'll never know. And, you know, Roe versus Wade was enacted in 1973. I mean, it definitely needs to be overhauled, if you ask me, and uh, because of the options that are out there. But uh, uh, not to mention, you know, he's just, you know, a threat to our country because he has already tried to tell um, law enforcement to, you know, try to stop people from protesting against him and saying, quote, lies about him. Uh, when we have the freedom of speech and we have the right to protest, that's one of our first, that's our first amendment right. And, you know, if he's gonna start putting restrictions on that and trying to use threat and intimidation now, what will he do as our president? And I know he's already talked about having the right to bear arms taken away. I mean, I know many people don't seem to care about that because they think guns are, are a big problem in our society and create danger, but this is a right for us to protect ourselves should we need to. I mean, there's many cases where people have, you know, their home has been invaded, and if they didn't have a gun, they would have been killed. So we have the right to bear arms in this country, and, you know, these are freedoms that our Constitution and our founding fathers felt were needed, and there's no reason for him to come along all these years later and try and remove these freedoms from us. So, um, you know, that's just another couple examples. There's, there's a, you know, also suspicion that Obama considered a traitor to his birth religion. They call him an apostate, apostate, a murtad from Islam. Because once you're born a Muslim to a Muslim father, you're always considered a Muslim, and they they do not accept conversion. If uh, if you did if he did truly convert to Christianity, which I question because his Christian beliefs and values are totally opposite of what most Christians believe. For one, the abortion issue, then you know it makes you question is he truly a christian or is he just saying he is and he's still practicing islam islam is a religion that hates hates americans uh they hate you know what we believe in they hate our freedoms um there's uh also it's also been said that uh if obama was elected he'd be He'd be uh, Osama bin Laden's favorite. Um, he's Osama bin Laden's favorite candidate, and Louis Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam has called Obama the hope of the entire world and compared him to the religion's founder, Fard Muhammad. These are all very extreme, radical people who dislike. America and what we stand for and our freedom. And these are people that Obama looks up to. Uh, his his uh, former pastor and friend that he called a mentor for 20-something years is, is racist against white people. And you know, how how can this be healthy? Where is his judgment? You know, just his judgment and uh, selection of character and friends to make you say, wait a minute, this guy just doesn't make sense. I don't trust him. He doesn't have good judgment. He has a horrible choice of friends. From criminals to terrorists. You know, his group ACORN that he was community organizer for. He, uh, 
he went out and uh, trained them when he was a community organizer on how to how to intimidate people, basically. Uh, and now they're going around uh, getting fraudulent votes from homeless people, convicted felons, and you know, and and creating voter fraud across the country. And the FBI is investigating them. They just raided a uh, a uh, Acorn office in Nevada this week. So there's just too many questions, too much to doubt. His judgment just isn't there. You know, people will think he's so great because he went to Harvard. Well, Harvard education doesn't make you qualified for president. Sorry to say. I would say Sarah Palin has more experience to qualify for president than he does. You know, she at least has been executive over a state, a city, and has run her own business. What has he done? Nothing. Nothing but community organizer of radical people who who uh, break the law basically. And uh, the Christian Science Monitor uh, had an article of a conversation that they overheard in Beirut where some of the, uh, some uh, grocer was talking to a customer about Obama and they said he has to be good for Arabs because he's Muslim, the grocer said. He's not a Muslim, he's a Christian, said the customer. The grocer said, no, he can't be Christian. His middle name is Hussein. Arrogant discussions of Obama sometimes mention his middle name as a code with no further comment needed. So the middle name of Hussein in the Muslim world has significance and means that he is indeed a Muslim. And so, you know, otherwise this creates a conflict of interest for him and the Muslims Either they hate him or they love him because if he is a converted uh, Muslim, they consider him an apost, which they do not really approve of. And uh, they assume any baby born to a Muslim father and named his thing began life as a Muslim. And he did indeed practice Islam and learn and study that in school when he was a child and practice, you know, their their religion and their belief. And then to deny all that now is just unbelievable. There's just so much doubt, so much to question. And I just don't understand why why many of these people refuse to do their own research. They'd rather go by what the uh the uh mainstream media such as CNN and most channels want to say rather than looking up the facts for themselves and you know and then and then they question all the facts they still don't believe you know what can you do people that don't want to educate themselves and don't want to become informed voters you know here you have McCain who has represented his country at, at war who has been in the Senate for you know many years and has done things for our country and has stood up for our country and shows his his love for our country. Obama has not done any of that. He does not show any love for his country by hanging around terrorist friends and having worked with terrorist friends like Ayers in the past. You know, regardless if he wants to call on his neighbor now and that's it, that, you know, he can deny all he wants and people can eat it and believe it's candy, but it's not the truth. And uh, I just wish they would check into it. Let's see if our caller is here yet. Ah, what happened now? She's still not calling in. What number did she call? <gasps> anyway, I guess I'll go on talking about the election. Um, McCain has, you know, much better plans for our country with less government control. And as you, as you can see, the, uh, you know, many people are not happy with the bailout decision, which gives the government more control over the banks and loaning, loan system and, and, and Wall Street, which makes our country a free market. But they were put between a rock and a hard place. And, you know, they're hoping to see the economy come around. It may take some time. It may not happen right away, but they intend for it to help. For it to help. So, 
you know, those who voted for it were stuck between a rock and a hard place. And as we know, both McCain and Obama did support it. So you can't say that one did and one didn't and say that one was wrong or one was right. So what it comes down to is who's going to try to help fix our economy and who has better plans for our economy. And I would definitely say it is McCain because he does not plan to raise our taxes. Uh, You cannot do that um, when the economy is down. There's already enough job losses and and, uh, companies leaving our country. And if you start raising taxes on them, we, you know, we'll have even more job loss, more pay decreasing, uh, more benefits taken away from employees. And that's just not going to work for our, our country and improve our economy at all. So unless, I was just typing here. I'm having computer problems today. I'm trying to check my email and see if she emails. But anyways, back to the uh, topic. All we can do is hope that the truth will come out in the end and uh, that McCain and Palin will prevail because this this is totally good versus evil and it seems like it's horrific in in this day and age that we would have this happening in our country and that our country is at risk of falling to a socialist, communist uh, president who will elect people who are on the extreme left of what is best for our country and do not support what is best for our country, but look out for themselves. I mean, the thought of, uh, you know, spread the wealth his redis- Obama's redistribution of wealth plan, that is a threat to our our uh, economy. Where is he going to put the cap on how much people can earn, you know, before he starts spreading the wealth? So, you know, it's just, there's this plan that too much to question and too much too many reasons to say no to Obama. Say just say no Obama, that's all I can say. And and do your research. Don't just listen to the T V and what the T V is telling you. You know, Obama's a, Obama's been trained to speak and, and uh and that's one of the things I'm sure they chose about him is his ability to uh, be charismatic, as some people call it, and and uh, make make the words come out in his, you know, make people think that what he's saying is is uh, great and. Uh, And uh, sorry about that, but and uh, make this, you know, he he's been trained to smooth talk and give everybody what they think they want to hear. But you know, people need to really analyze what is he really saying? What does he really mean? What is he really about? And who is he? You know, all his friends are either terrorists or extreme radicals or racists against against the white. His, these are also his mentors and people that, you know, he looked up to in his earlier years. And, you know, he's written two books and that's about it. And they're just about him. So what does that tell you about him? He's all about him. All about Obama. Doesn't sound like he's for us. So... I don't know what happened to our caller, so these pre-recorded calls with her are just not working out lately. I don't know if she called the wrong number now. 
We got the time or day mixed up. Oh, it's getting crazy. Anyway, you know, I have done quite a bit of research as well as others. And, uh, you know, all of us finding out is he's not going to be in the best interest of our country. You know, history repeats itself and don't let it happen here. He's just too much like a dictator. He sounds too much like, uh, like Hitler. You know, people really uh, fell for him and mobs of people, you know, started to follow him and were entranced by him. And it's not not a good thing, you know. And you, you don't want to start looking at the facts and the reality and you want to go by what the, the, what the mob is saying or what Obama is saying and what the mainstream media is saying. You're not being an informed voter and you're not educating yourself on what the facts are and what's really going on and what really could happen if Obama becomes our next president. I mean, while in Iraq, Obama tried to persuade the U.S. commanders, including General Petraeus, to suggest a realistic withdrawal date. They declined. I mean, and here he, you know, he, that's, that's not his position to be trying to negotiate for one. But for two, you know, you cannot set a date on when the country is going to be stabilized. You know, it depends on what is happening and what is going on. I mean, he does not have a glass, you know, a crystal ball, I should say, to to, uh, to predict when this is going to happen. You can't just put a date on something like that. I mean, that just shows, again, his lack of foreign policy understanding, his lack of understanding how, you know, national security. I mean... Obama would like to set a deadline of 2010. It's a meaningless concept. And uh, it's just not going to work. You can't set dates and time. You don't know when things are going to be stabilized. Sure, you know, everybody wants war to end and for it to be over, but we have to do it in a proper manner that, you know, gets our troops out of there safely and leaves the country stabilized. So... Let's see what else. Um, uh, even Gaddafi, you know, he says Obama's Muslim background that creates a conflict for for our country and even theirs. And he's a known dictator. So something has to be wrong with Obama if, you know, you have other dictators not not uh, looking forward to him taking over the United States, the uh, largest country and most, uh, you know, strongest country in the world. So what does that tell you? Tells me no Obama. Another reason to say no to Obama. No. And then uh, his his wife, she's very angry and, and uh, anti-white and, and racial. You uh, should read her college thesis from, I believe it was Princeton. And she just does not show that she really loves this country. She you know, already admitted that this is the first time she's loved our country now that her husband is running for president and believe him to be, to win. So she has even said on the view, she is quoted as saying that her own husband is sweet and pathetic. I mean, who would call who would say that about their husband in, in public? And you know, what does that mean? Who what does that tell you what her respect is for her own husband? Sounds like she either wears the pants or she doesn't even have respect for him. And it's almost certain that Michelle Obama, new Harvard um, law grad, had failed the 1988 bar and only 19% of the test takers failed. So was it affirmative action that got her through law school? It's starting to sound that way. 
you know, the ACORN group that Obama represented and uh, the community organizers for created uh, a lot of the economic crisis now with the uh, subprime loans that were given to poor people, primarily blacks, and they would cry racism if they if the banks did not give the loans out. So banks were forced into giving these loans out back in the 70s till now, or they would con- you know cry racism and 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 uh, intimidate with lawsuits, you know, threaten lawsuits. So this is just uh, not a good thing. Not a good thing at all. So uh, there's Democrats for McCain, the Hillary Clinton. There's Hillary supporters for McCain at HillaryClintonForum.com. And it looks like our caller is going to call, and I don't know what number she's. I don't know why she's why this is happening, but okay. Well, hopefully I can reschedule again. If not, I'm just it's not going to work out with her. Oh, this is so hot still. Oh. Anyway, you know, there's just too much negative and too much to question and doubt about Obama that people really need to get educated about him and really learn about him. I mean, if he was so smart, why did why does he have friends that hate our country? You know? I just don't understand it. Why does he, uh, well, how come he didn't know about Ayer's past, you know, and then work with him? And, uh, you know, or did he know about it and just denying it? He launched his political career as a senator in Ayer's house. Ayer's is a, uh, a, an American terrorist from the 70s who tried to bomb our our own country, um, our own building, the Pentagon, for one, along with his Weather Underground supporters. So you have to question Obama's judgment, you know. And you know, if he's so educated, why didn't he know about this? You know, there's a un, Weather Underground victim that says Obama should have known about Ayer's past. There is no reason that he did not know about it. If he, you know, as an educated man, you know, read papers, watched TV, uh, was educated, then he would have known. And so I feel like he is just denying the truth on that, and it's just too questionable. You know, what is their history, and what do they really know, and how do they really work together? You know, he was on a school reform board with Ayers in Chicago, and part of that, the reform that Ayers wanted to create in the school was teaching children to be radical and go against their government, go against their parents, and give them more power to make them uh, rebel, basically, against their own country. So it's just horrific, that, you know, the more you learn about about him and his character and his judgment and his plans for our country, you have to say no Obama. Say, just say no Obama. No to Obama. There's no reason he should be elected president of this great country and want and allow him to take away many of the freedoms that we have, that we have been given, and that have been in place since our founding fathers, you know, put them into our Constitution. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, and it's just ridiculous to see how many people are so uneducated um, with uh, what's really going on and uh, what Obama's 
real plans are for this country. So I ask you, if you hear this, if you're listening to this, please become an informed voter. Go and learn the facts about Obama. This isn't a racial issue. This is a this is a humanity issue. This is a, a civil rights issue. This is about our country's freedoms and our rights as Americans that are at risk here. And uh, Palin and, our, and McCain are just our best option right now. Obama will destroy this country and our economy more. And uh, he's, you know, he's gotten money from foreign countries that need to be explained and investigated. There's just too many questions, too many doubts. You know, why would he be considered uh, Osama bin Laden's ideal candidate? You know, that doesn't sound like a good thing. Why would you want to be an ideal candidate to a, ter- a known terrorist? Why would he uh, and other terrorist countries see us as uh, see him as a great leader? And he's Obama is Bin Laden's dream candidate. And so, you know, he's just too questionable, too risky, not enough experience to pop it all off. That, you know, just because McCain's older and people don't like Palin because she's too pretty, too smart. I mean, I've heard just stupid reasons why they don't like her, that it's ridiculous. There is no reason to vote Obama over McCain and Palin. They have the experience. They have better intentions for our country. You may not agree with everything they believe in and represent, but they have our country's best interests in mind, and that's what you need to consider. You know, if you want more government control and less freedom and less rights as as an American, then you may as well go live in a communist country like China because that's what Obama is going to do to us. And I hope for your sake and your children's future, you will consider that and say no, Obama. Thank you for listening. So that's all I have to say for today. Uh, Unfortunately, our caller didn't make it, so I turned it into a political discussion and hope and plead that you will, you know, Start researching these facts yourself. The election time is coming to an end, and our country's freedom is at risk, and our, and our civil rights are at risk, our civil liberties. So please, do your own research. Stop listening to the media and start, you know, doing your own research. Research it. It's going to require reading. It's going to require searching. But you will find there is way too much to doubt about Obama, too much reasonable doubt. And if you were on a jury deciding whether he was really qualified as our president over McCain, based on all that you find about the two of them, you will find there's too much reasonable doubt against Obama to select him as our next president. So, again, this is Mama's time out. And we'll talk to you again next month, and I'll have more great guests to uh, talk to. Um, so make sure you tune in. We broadcast live bi weekly and unless otherwise posted. So make sure you sign up for our newsletter on our blog at littlebitesnews.blogspot.com. And set reminders here to listen to future shows live and call in at 646 595 4516. And if you'd like to be a guest on a future show, please. Um, Go to mamastimeout.com and click the contact button there and send your subject idea, discussion idea, site contact info, your your bio and photo, and I will contact you with further details and schedule a live or pre-recorded interview. And I also offer the option of doing blog interviews, which are just a written question, question and answer exchange. To, uh, which links back to you. So please contact me if you're interested in that option. And I also do uh, book and product reviews on the blog. So if you are promoting a book or product, 
uh, please contact me for information on having me review it, and I will uh, get that done and can get my review up on on the invite to me blogspot.com website. So, thank you again for listening, and may God bless and protect this country from the abomination. Have a great week, and talk to you soon.